So now let's look at the story of Thomas Hunt Morgan and his discoveries. So Thomas Hunt Morgan was an American geneticist and he worked at Columbia University. In 1933, he was given the Nobel Prize in Physiology or Medicine because he'd done a lot of work in looking at the role of the chromosome in heredity. So the work that he had done was with fruit flies, which we refer to as Drosophila a lot of the time. And his work with fruit flies, he found that the outcomes, the phenotypes, what he observed in those fruit flies, did not agree with the Mendelian ratios discovered by Mendel originally that he was aware of. In fruit flies, he had noticed that some traits, for example, having white eyes, so fruit flies can have red eyes, they can have white eyes, but when he observed the phenotype, the white eyes, he found that they occurred mostly in the male fruit flies, but very, very rarely in the females. So in this image, you can see the white eye of the fruit fly. So what he had done was he crossed a red-eyed female with a white-eyed male. And when he did that, he had made the assumption that according to the ratios that Mendel had predicted, that he would get an equal chance of red and white eyes in the offspring, and equally so that this would be distributed equally between males and females. The assumption here was that these two genes, the gene for the eye color and the gene determining sex, which we know is actually the chromosomes, the sex chromosomes, that these are separate, that the white eye, the red eye, the eye color essentially, the gene for eye color is carried on a different chromosome to the sex chromosomes. But what he had discovered was that white eyes was found mostly in males. So what can we take away from this? We can take away that in fact, the white eye trait, the white eye, the gene for eye color is sex linked. So it is present on the X chromosome. It is not present on the Y chromosome. So being sex linked, this means that eye color in fruit flies is carried on the same chromosomes that determines the sex of the fruit flies. Now, since male fruit flies, actually any biological male only has one X chromosome, they can only express the gene for eye color on that X chromosome. So you can see in the genetic cross on the right that the first genetic cross was between the red eyed female and the white eyed male. And the outcome there, since the female was homozygous for the red eyes, the outcome, if you conduct this genetic cross, is that the male and the females both had red eyes, albeit the female is heterozygous for the red eye. So if you take that female and you mate that female with another red-eyed male, you have the offspring shown in the bottom right-hand corner. And this is essentially sex linkage. So you may have learned about this before, but this is what Morgan discovered. He discovered that linkage was possible, that genes that determine two different traits can be found on the same chromosomes. In this case, the gene for determining eye color is on the same chromosomes that determine the sex of the fruit flies. So he carried out these experiments with many different traits, not just eye color, but also body color and wing size. And actually on the left hand side, you can see vestigial wings for these fruit flies, like the top fruit fly in the image versus normal wings, which you can see in the middle three fruit flies. So when he carried out these crosses with many, many different traits, the ratios that he was obtaining were not the same as would have been predicted from Mendel's laws. And Mendel's laws were essentially based on the idea that traits were found on different chromosomes, although that's n that wasn't known at the time. Basic Mendelian inheritance follows very predictable ratios, but it is based on those traits being on different chromosomes, different homologous pairs. So it looks like the image that you can see on the right hand side. By this point in the course, you will have studied many different 
monohybrid crosses that were based on what we call Mendelian inheritance like this. But Morgan had discovered ratios that just did not agree with this. So what does it really mean? At the end of the day, he found that there are different patterns of inheritance for genes that are considered to be linked. And that is linked either on the sex chromosomes, which we call sex linkage that I just described in the fruit flies, or linked on autosomal chromosomes. So from the image at the bottom on the left hand side, you can see a situation where it's unlinked. So the orange gene, which I've trait that word to code for, is on a separate chromosome, in this case homologous pair, separate homologous pair of chromosomes from the gene that is shown in green. If they are linked, aka what you see on the right hand side, then the two genes would be found on the same chromosome or same homologous pair of chromosomes. This is a very important distinction because whether they're unlinked versus linked determines their pattern of inheritance. And if they are linked, it is a different pattern of inheritance. So what we can say is that if the genes are linked, this can cause a departure from the expected ratios we may have predicted from Mendelian inheritance.